moments after she was executed, there are numerous eyewitness accounts of people who say that they saw that it was Israeli snipers that were shooting at the journalists. At least 45 journalists have been killed by the Israeli occupation since 2000. The mainstream media going back to their old habits of being a propaganda arm for the Zionist regime. The first New York Times headline said that she died at 51. The Associated Press could not give a decent headline. Hey, maybe they're scared of getting bombed again. The funeral procession of Shireen was attacked by the occupation, the same occupation that murdered her in cold blood. This is what happened to the Palestinians who came out to support Shireen, to denounce the brutal killing of this beloved journalist. There's been excellent work by Palestinians and our allies correcting the heinous headlines and telling our own stories. Palestine Pod. Hello and welcome to episode 55 of the Palestine Pod, the weekly podcast where we break down the latest headlines dealing with Palestine from all over the world and bring you stories, commentary, and interviews with the aim of supporting the Palestinian struggle for justice and equal rights. I'm one of your hosts, Lara E. You might know me from Instagram as at Gazan Girl, and I'm joined by my co-host, Mikey B. What's up, y'all? Mikey B on TikTok, Michael Scherzer on Instagram. And you can call me Mikey Intifada if you're going to ask for a credible source, but you're busy murdering all the credible sources. Before we get into today's episode, please like, comment, and subscribe if you hang out with us on YouTube. And if you're listening on a podcast app, subscribe and leave a review. As always, you can find our full episodes and sources on palestinepod.com. And if you want to get involved in the conversation, reach out to us at palestinepod at gmail.com and give us a follow on Instagram at the Palestine Pod. Find us also on Patreon where you get early access to the Palestine pod episodes and additional one and two podcasts per week, including the Patreon pod, as well as access to the Palestine pod book club. Uh, We meet four times a year and we are going through all of the Palestinian classics and history and culture and scholarship. We're still hosting our monthly zoom happy hours with our Patreon subscribers only as well. So really exciting stuff. Check us out on patreon.com slash Palestine pod. Where do we even start on May 11th, 2022? Beloved Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akla, working for Al Jazeera for decades now, was executed by the Israeli occupation while she was reporting on an Israeli raid of the Janine refugee camp. So much has been said, and I feel like the fact that we're recording this now is giving us a little bit of advantage in the sense that we're not the first ones to comment. So we have seen a lot of things develop in the last week. Some of it is so atrocious. Some of it is really disappointing. The the mainstream media just going back to their old habits of being a propaganda arm for the Zionist regime, as if they learned nothing from May 2021, you know, when we thought that we were breaking barriers and we were educating the public in mass and especially these mainstream media organizations that managed to give us just a glimpse of humanity in that, in those moments where they would report and not even like fully authentically supporting the reality of what's happening, but just sometimes when they would, you know, say that a you know, Palestinian house was bulldozed or a Palestinian house was taken over by settlers and then they would use settlers. And, you know, there were moments where we felt like we were, oh, people are finally listening to see the barrage of headlines this last week made me realize you learned nothing at all. They decided to go against their own guidelines that they put out last year, where the AP was telling people not to use a passive voice, right? To identify the victim and the perpetrator, as opposed to just stating a victim, you know, with as if it the victim was the victim abstract of any oppressor, right? Like, like the oppressor doesn't exist. Just a person got victimized by who? Say. Right. It's literally the most important piece of information. Right. Who did the thing? That we're reporting. Like who, what, when, who, what, when, where, why, how? Like that's, you know, basic journalism. You give the info. And it's like the first New York Times headline about the story said that she died at 51. Yeah. It seems like their new thing is like, who, what, when, where, how do we get paid? (laughs) 
Right. And how do we cover up the crime on behalf of the Zionists? How do we yeah. cover it up? They're part of a cover up. They're an and essential part of the cover up. They're they the are part accomplices. They're the part of the cover up that delivers the message to the masses. Right? They're they're the mouthpiece of the cover up. Yes. It's not like they are some like oh no like what could we ever do? Like they are co-conspirators. They didn't fire the gun, sure, but they delivered the message. And if we're shooting the messenger these days, we got to take aim at the New York Times. We got to take aim at all these major media organizations who are literal accomplices to murder, to genocide, and to occupation. And why do they do that? So that they can keep their nice ad revenues going. So that they don't ruffle any feathers in the newsroom. So that they don't face any pressure from their editors or from the people who serve on the boards of all of these huge conglomerates that influence media. Their first headline was Shireen Abu Akla, Palestinian journalist, dies aged 51. Honestly, sounds like she died in her sleep of natural causes. Died at 51. Died at 51. There was obvious outrage directed at this headline that they changed it. So they changed it from dies at 51 to trailblazing Palestinian journalist killed in West Bank. Nah, go fuck okay. yourself. Go fuck yourself. Because now you have made her anonymous. You've removed her name. And we still don't know who did the killing. Even yeah. though there's a video which shows Shireen in the moments after she was executed. There are numerous eyewitness accounts of people who say that they saw that it was Israeli snipers that were shooting at the journalists. Those, of course, were completely disregarded. Nobody gives a shit that there were eyewitnesses. Mainstream media, all they did was run to the Israeli government and ask, what can we say about this? Tell, it, tell us, daddy, what can we say? What are we allowed to say? Like that, That's literally the vibe that I get from watching them operate is that they are on standby waiting for, okay, did they tell us what we can say? Okay, this is what we're going to say. This is not an exaggeration because if you look at what just happened moments ago, just before I, we came on to record this, the funeral of Shireen, the procession of Shireen in Palestine was attacked by the occupation. There are videos circulating, you can watch them, of the of the pallbearers, the Palestinian men who are holding up her casket, who are walking in, in the streets of Palestine, being attacked by the same occupation that murdered her in cold blood. And there is literally a video, Ahmed al who we had on the show, he, he posted of one of the brothers who is holding up her casket in one hand and fending off the attacks of the occupation with another hand. Even in our death, we, we cannot rest easy. Because Shireen's body was being manhandled by the, uh, the same occupation that killed her while her supporters, her family, her friends, her loved ones, her community came to pay respects to her. And there are gruesome images of people who were attacked. One of my friend's mothers was attacked in a demonstration supporting Shireen. One of my friend's mothers, and she posted pictures of her elderly mother being beaten, who, who was beaten to a pulp by the occupation for attending a demonstration. She's Palestinian and her mother is still in Palestine. And she posted pictures of how her mother came back. She had blue, she had bruises on her eyes. She had bruises on her hands. She had literally a black eye. This is what happened to the Palestinians who came out to support Shireen and to denounce the brutal killing of this beloved journalist. It's really, it's, it's insane to me, but guess what? It doesn't end there. How did the New York Times report on the attacks by the occupation of Shireen's funeral procession? How did they, what did they say about it? We have the video. We know what happened. We saw it. There is a sentence in the New York Times article about the attacks on the funeral procession by the occupation that says, the incident at the funeral procession lasted for roughly a minute and followed a tense standoff between riot police and mourners in which at least one empty plastic bottle was thrown in the direction of the police. Oh no, not an empty plastic bottle. 
A, who among us hasn't attacked a funeral procession, right? That's normal people behavior. And it's like, imagine looking at somebody who's literally carrying a casket and then being like, whole rest of their body's open to be hit. Right. What kind of uh, fucking mentality is that? No, but also imagine, imagine writing this sentence. Oh, trying yeah. Trying to figure out a way. Oh, yeah. Trying to figure out a way that you could justify, that you could say, no, no, no. But it was, you know, they, they, were, they weren't wrong. I mean, they had an empty plastic bottle thrown at them, all of them. One also, bottle. listen, it only lasted a minute or so. Like, we just cash. It's not like yeah. it was a long attack on a funeral procession. Not like it lasted five to ten minutes. That would be obviously wrong. Right. But just a yeah. minute. Hey, under a minute, beat the shit out of a funeral procession. That's actually sure. how Jews sit Shiva. That's what it says. It says under a minute. Yeah. You know what else is crazy? They say riot police. They're not riot police. Yeah. It's the occupation. It's an right. illegal occupation. They, their presence on Palestinian land is illegal. Their very presence is an act of provocation and an act of violence against Palestinians. They are not the police. Police yeah. makes it sound like, oh, we pay taxes and then they're funneled to these thugs that like are supposed to support us and protect us, but they actually don't. And that's a whole different problem. These are not police. This is worse than police because they're an invading army. Would you call Russian occupying soldiers police in you in Ukraine? Would you call them police? That's insane. That doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't call them at all because I don't have their phone number. But yeah. <laughs> also, I don't know if you saw how Forbes reported on it, but Forbes said Shireen Abu Akla, well-known reporter, died after being hit in the head by a bullet. Hit in the head by a bullet. Hey, do bullets independently hit people in their head? It sounds like she got into a fist fight with a bullet. Hit in the head with a bullet? Who shot the bullet? Bullets don't shoot themselves. Bullets don't aim at people. Who shot the bullet being hit in the head it's even, by a bullet? Yeah, it's even worse than that because they the Forbes headline makes it sound like she was in the way of the bullet. I mean, yeah. That's how that's how Forbes sees it. Like Oh, you shouldn't have been there. That's where the bullet was. Silly you and your head being in the way of a bullet. Hey, bet if your head wasn't there, bullet wouldn't be there. That's how the Forbes article reported on it. You know, there was a few years back during one of the Israeli bombardments on Gaza. There was a meme. People thought it was real for a little and then it turned out to be satire. And, and, and the scrolling headline was Israeli soldier sprains ankle in Gaza. Like they were murdering <laughs> thousands of people during those bombardments. And the scrolling headline was about how he's a soldier twisted his ankle in Gaza. And the New York Times line about the empty plastic bottle reminds me of that satire of the BBC that we saw several years ago. People saying, oh, yeah, well, you know, but it's not that bad. Right. Oh, it's satire. But, you know, no, no, this is an actual news article now today. That is echoing the sentiment of something which was very much said there many years ago. What is going on? Who, how many people approved that sentence to be published? But I will just say that there's obviously been excellent work by Palestinians and our allies in the last week responding to this, correcting the heinous headlines that we are seeing and telling our own stories. Eamon did a very thoughtful piece about Shireen on his show on MSNBC. And he emphasized that the Israeli government should not be carrying out the so-called investigation that they say that they're going to carry out, right? The IMEU came out with another really thoughtful podcast that Diana Butu was speaking on. Palestine Deep Dive ended up focusing on the, the notion of P Palestinian journalists being targeted by Israel as just par for the course. It's part of, it's their modus operandi. They constantly target Palestinian journalists and international journalists. Let's not forget that in May 2021, one of the major crimes that Israel committed was leveling the AP building in Gaza, where the offices of the Associated Press and Al Jazeera were in Gaza. They leveled it. And yet the Associated Press today could not give a decent headline. 
hey, maybe they're scared of getting bombed again. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they realize, oh, okay, so now we have to be subservient because if we're not, they'll blow well, up they our office blow- again. Yeah, they yeah. might, they might blow us up. So now we're going to report back in the passive voice. They blew us back to the passive voice. Literally, yeah. So for what it's worth, I think you're exactly right, Michael. We have to hold space for every Palestinian journalist that has been targeted by the apartheid state, that has been executed by the apartheid state. At least 45 journalists have been killed by the Israeli occupation since 2000 according to the Palestinian Ministry of Information. Shireen Abu Akla was the latest in this very long list of Palestinian journalists. I'd like to hold space for them and uh, read their names and the year that they were targeted and executed by Israel. Shireen Abu Akla, 2022. Yusuf Abu Hussein, 2021. Ahmed Abu Hussein, 2018. Abdullah Fadl Murtaja, 2018. Ali Abu Afash, 2014. Hamada Khalid Muqat, 2014. Simon Kameli, 2014. Shadi Hamdi Ayad, 2014. Abdullah Nasser Khalil Fajan, 2014. Muhammad Majid Dahir, 2014. Muhammad Nuruddin Mustafa Ad Diri, 2014. Rami Fathi Hussein Rayan, 2014. Samah Muhammad Al Aryan, 2014. Ahed Afif Saqud, 2014. Azad Salama Dahir, 2014. Baha Ad Din Al Gharib, 2014. Abdul Rahman Ziyad Abu Hain, 2014. Khalid Riyad Muhammad Hamad, 2014. Najla Mahmoud Al Hajj, 2014. Hamid Abdullah Shihab, 2014. Muhammad Musa Abu Aisha, 2012. Mahmoud Ali Ahmed Al Kumi, 2012. Hussam Muhammad Salama, 2014. Shavdat Kilichar, 2010. Ala Hamad Mahmoud Murtaja, 2009. Ihab Jamal, 2009. Hassan Al Wahdi, 2009. Basil Ibrahim Faraj, 2009. Omar Abdel Hafid Al Silawi, 2009. Fadal Subhi Shana, 2008. Hassan Ziyad Shakura, 2008. Muhammad Adil Abu Halima, 2004. Khalil Muhammad Khalil Zabin, 2004. James Henry Dominic Miller, 2003. Nazah Adil Darwaza, 2003. Fadi Nashat Al Alauna, 2003. Hisam Al Talawi, 2002. Imad Subhi Abu Zahra, 2002. Amjad Al Alami, 2002. Jamil Abdullah and Nawara, 2002. Ahmed Noam, 2002. Rafael Cirlo, 2002. Muhammad Abdul Karim Al Bishawi, 2001. Uthman Abdul Qadir Al Qatani, 2001. And Aziz Yusuf Al Tan, 2000. Killing journalists is against international law, right? Yeah. I'm, Every I'm single time. Know. If you're unaware with internet, like it's one of the more basic principles of international law is that journalists should be allowed to move freely and report on what's happening on the ground. That is a function of journalism. We just read off 45 instances where international law was contravened, was totally disrespected, disregarded, and nothing's happened. Nothing at all has happened to the people responsible for those murders. And that's why they keep killing journalists. That's why they keep killing journalists, because nobody does anything about it. The International Criminal Court has been sitting on their fucking hands for decades now. They've seen turnover after turnover of people coming through, going out getting new jobs, doing other shit, taking deals, making sure that nobody ever is held accountable. What's the wait? Like, why is it that we are presenting more evidence of occupation breaking international law than they are? I'm a comedian. You know what I mean? She's like, like, she's a lawyer, but this is like, this is not what we specialize in you know we did this whole thing because 
we saw that almost nobody else was covering it. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's like, it's like the occupation is murdering journalists. Like they're trying to compete with Russia for an award. You know, in 2018, the UN Human Rights Council concluded after the UN Independent Commission of Inquiry into the 2018 Gaza protests. You remember the, the March of Return. The UN Independent Commission of Inquiry concluded that Israel intentionally shot children and journalists in Gaza. Just let that marinate. It means that soldiers were aiming intentionally at journalists. What did the apartheid state say earlier this week? They said that she was armed with a camera. They said that. In, in justifying the murder of Shirin, they said she was armed with a camera. And then those same people would be like, how could you target civilians? Meanwhile, your civilian is like a registered corporal in the fucking army. And Shireen was a journalist. It's really, really, really problematic. Obviously, the apartheid regime is lying. They do it all the time. They first said that it wasn't her and they posted some video of some dude. You don't know where it is. It looks like it's in a city. It has nothing to do with the video of her actually being murdered where you see that she's in a more rural area. And they tried to put the blame on us because they say, they said, oh, no, 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 Palestinians killed her. Forget the eyewitnesses. We'll just put up a video of anything and just say that Palestinians did it. And then they backtracked and they were like, oh, yeah, oops. It's a PR nightmare for Israel what's happening right now because usually when they murder us eh, i mean nobody really notices right usually they can kill thousands of people in gaza nobody holds them to account for anything but they they call it mowing the lawn they call it mowing the lawn right yeah they they call it mowing the lawn this one ruffled a few feathers a little more than than usual probably because she's a journalist probably because she's american Right. So that matters more than if you're not. I also have seen people who are trying to be helpful comment, you know, she was American. She was a Catholic, you know, right. it doesn't really help. It's like you're playing into the racism that like Muslims don't matter, but Catholics do Truly. So be outraged because a Catholic was killed. Right. So that's weird. Like you're trying to help, but it's not really working. Unless you're doing it ironically where you're like, look, they're Ukrainian, (laughs) you know, like if you're making a joke about the white Christians in Palestine who are being beaten, but you don't care about them, you know, like that's fine. If you're only only if you're highlighting the contradiction and hypocrisy. Yeah, But that's not what. Yeah. But if if you're in earnest being like protect only Catholics and protect (laughs) Americans, you're problematic and you're disgusting because you're saying that's like American exceptionalism as well, where you're like American lives matter more than Palestinians. And that's disgusting. Yeah. I wanted to share one thing. Somebody who posted, I found this really touching. Nadima Khatib posted on Instagram. If you want to understand the dimension of our loss Ask anyone in any Arab country or any Arab community in the world. Stop people randomly on the street and ask them about Shireen Abu Akla. Older and younger people will tell you how present she's been in their lives for 25 years. Let me tell you. My late grandmother, survivor of the Nakba, watched her reports from Palestine on Al Jazeera. My father, now 90 years old, also survivor of the Nakba, watched Shireen's reporting. I watched her reporting and had the honor to work with her remotely. I just got home and found my son and his classmates who are 14 years old posting about Shireen on their social media without having watched her a single time. They don't watch traditional TV reporting. That's four generations and counting. Trying to break it down for an American audience, Shireen's American counterpart to me is like Amy Goodman. Like we all grew up watching Amy Goodman and like... If any, if the government or the military assassinated Amy Goodman and then tried to blame it on us, dude, we would all be like, (laughs) the fuck? Nobody would, nobody would believe that anybody from like the side of justice assassinated Amy Goodman. It makes absolutely no sense. Why would anybody kill Shireen? She was beloved. Hey, (laughs) you, you know who would kill Shireen though? 
is a fucking psycho looking down the scope of a sniper rifle whose entire existence is threatened by Shireen's life and body of work. And you know how sick these motherfuckers are. These motherfuckers are so sick that I guarantee you this is, dude is going to be bragging that he hit Shireen in the head. Like there is no doubt in my mind that he knew who she was, targeted her, and is now proud of what he's done. And I assume it's a he. It could have been a girl. I don't know. I should say the shooter. Yeah. But yeah. You know, knowing misogyny in the occupation military, it was probably a guy. But also knowing that it's the most but also progressive it's army. Democracy. Yeah. Progressive army. Probably, could have been, might hey, have been a woman. Could have been a non binary penguin. Who knows? Like, All we know is that the shooter was vegan. <laughs> that made me laugh. I don't want to laugh during this episode. But. Yeah. Well, I've got to try. Incidentally, one of the better pieces about this horrific event actually appeared in Time magazine. And it was titled The Problem with Israel's Version of the Killing of Reporter Shireen Abu Aklam. And I found it really, I mean, they did journalism. Right. They did like a little bit of journalism. They thought about what they wrote before they wrote it. Things that all these other organizations were obviously not doing. Oh, you but- mean that they they tweaked the Israeli <laughs> press release given to them? Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they did a little editing. Right. No, it, it actually was helpful because what it does is it actually breaks down Israel's strategy for how it deals with these PR emergencies. Right. So the article says deny and deflect is Israel's usual strategy for dealing with high profile civilian deaths. The deflection has come in three forms. One is claiming Palestinians killed the civilian. Famous examples are British cameraman James Miller, 10 year old Abir Araman, the three daughters and niece of Dr. Azzedine Abulesh inside their home in Gaza while he begged on live television for Israel to stop firing. That, by the way, side note, is one of the most horrific executions by the apartheid regime of Palestinian civilians. This father, he's a physician, he's Palestinian and Canadian, and his three daughters were murdered in their home in Gaza while he literally was appearing on live television, begging them to stop firing on his home. Anyway, the article goes on to say, often Israel claims that the victim was near a site from which Palestinian gunmen were attacking Israelis and hence got killed by accident by Israeli fire. The examples that the article gives here are the four Gaza children on the beach and 40 people taking refuge at a UN school in Gaza when Israel bombed the UN school, as well as the murder of British UN worker Ian Hook in Janine. Israel has also claimed that the civilian was involved in an attack on Israeli soldiers or was a member of a Palestinian militant organization. They did this in the case of photojournalist Yasser Murtaja in Gaza. In other cases, it said that the facts around the killing are unclear, but definitely not Israel's fault. The example here is the Palestinian family who was killed by a shell on a beach in Gaza. In the case of the 2003 death of American pro-Palestinian activist Rachel Corey, who was crushed to death by an Israeli military bulldozer while she was protecting a Palestinian home in Gaza. The Israeli army claimed that, quote, a slab of concrete, end quote, was likely what killed her. Yeah, I'm sure it had nothing to do with the bulldozer pushing her into a slab of concrete. The article goes on to describe how within half an hour of Abu Akhla's killing, the Israeli state PR machine went to work on a deflection strategy. So we talked about this like fake video that they released, but then it came out that Beit Salem had actually done some geolocalization showing that the clip that the Israeli government released had nothing to do with the area where she was actually killed. So it was phony. It was fake. And as usual, we're getting just very like lukewarm, not adequate responses from U.S. officials. And I only bring this up not because, you know, it matters that she was American and that her death mattered more than the death of a Palestinian, that her killing mattered more than the killing of a Palestinian who doesn't have American nationality. Again, the U.S. pays for Israel to murder American citizens. 
you better believe that that sniper was using probably American weaponry, being totally covered from head to toe in American, whatever it is, armor. And the entire funding of the military is thanks to the billions of dollars each year that the United States gives to Israel. Shit, for all we know, so, the shooter himself could have been American because they have lone 100%, soldiers. percent. A hundred percent. Or could have been Canadian or could have been from some other, co- or definitely was yeah. from some other country, right? I mean, like They're all from some other like, country. They're all from some other country. Sitting over in their house somewhere in Connecticut being like, can't believe what's happening in my country. It's like, which country are you talking about? Which country is your country? So now uh, there's been some pressure on the apartheid state to participate in an independent investigation. Apartheid state, the murderers responsible for her murder, asked the Palestinians to share the bullet so that they could carry out their investigation. And the Palestinians said, no, we don't trust you. The Time article also speaks about how when Palestinian Americans are injured or killed by Israel, Israel quickly investigates, but the process basically never ends with any punishment. When the occupation kills non-American Palestinians, there's no investigation, nobody cares. When they kill Palestinians with American nationality, they have to give some sort of a semblance that they are carrying out an investigation, right? That whole, we're looking into it. Oh, yeah. And the American side will fire off a couple tweets for sure. Shout out sure. To, to Jen Psaki, who was like bemoaning the death of Shireen that she has paid for. She's like, yeah, no, I ran cover for like the billions of dollars of aid for years, but just such a heartbreaking tragedy that developed that nobody could have foreseen oh and it's just like wow you are satan like shaitan when palestinian americans are killed by israel they will investigate or say they're investigating but they're the process never almost never ends with any punishment to the offending soldiers uh just four months ago the U.S. pressed Israel to carry out an investigation into their killing of a Palestinian-American man who Israeli soldiers detained in the middle of the night. He was an elderly man who had returned to Palestine after living in Milwaukee for almost 40 years, and he died of a heart attack outside in the cold at a construction site where the occupation soldiers had left him on the ground, gagged with his hands tied tightly and his eyes covered after they beat him. No reason why right? He's a suspect of any kind. And again, they're occupation soldiers. So they're, they're on our land illegally. They shouldn't even be there to begin with. And yet they can tie us up, put blindfolds on us, cuff us and leave us in the cold so that we die of heart attacks and then say, no, we're looking into it. We're going to investigate. Big democracy vibes. In that instance, the top commander of the unit was rebuked, but the soldiers who carried out the beating and murder were not punished. In 2014, an Israeli officer beat 15-year-old Tark Abu Khudair to a pulp. You can look up the pictures of him. He was unrecognizable. His face was so swollen after being beat by the occupation soldier. And it was only when it was revealed that he was a U.S. citizen that Israel opened an investigation at the demand of the U.S. But guess what? An Israeli judge later sentenced the police officer who committed this beating to community service. That's all he got. You can just beat a Palestinian to a pulp, a child, for no reason, and you might get community service in the worst of cases. I don't know if you know this, but community service in the occupation actually consists of beating up a Palestinian. So he just went right back to work. (laughs) There you go. The settler judge was like, hey, good work. I've got to go uproot some Palestinians and Mm -hmm. ethnically cleanse them from their neighborhood now. Actually, yes. Speaking of which, while all of this is happening, there are literal settlers right now taking over Palestinian homes in occupied Hebron. The videos that were released of that, they are literally carrying their cots 
and they're running into a Palestinian building to take it over. They sleep on the type of mats that you do like gym workouts on. It's really gross. And they're running. You see them carrying yeah, of those course. mats. They're running from the bus, which took them to Hebron into the house like they're contestants on the real world. You know what I mean? Like they're just so <laughs> like excited only- to get into the house and like get a room and like they want the best room. And it's like, it's so exciting. I just like, I'm, I'm, Los, I'm from Los Angeles and I'm just so excited to be here on MTV. Like <laughs> shout out to like Israel and yum, yum, Israel. Hi, yum, yum, yum. You know, it's like, dude, they're all fucking insane, bro. They're like, I have a record deal. Check out my SoundCloud. And also God gave us the land. <laughs> T hashtag freedom, hashtag democracy. Hashtag vacation, Aliyah. Oh, I've never hated somebody so much as these people. Honestly, dude. I like. I try to be funny about it. I, it's very hard, truly, to be funny about this. I, I, sometimes I know uh, it's so infuriating to watch this and to not be able to do anything about it. It's the type of thing that, if done to Israelis themselves they would immediately go to war. Like they would immediately fight if any of this ever happened to them. Michael, they can't handle an empty plastic bottle. Do you think that they could handle even a fraction, like a fingernails worth of the oppression that they are carrying out against us? No. And I think that's why they do it. That's why they clamp down even harder on the oppression is because they know that this is all fleeting. This is all, they see it collapsing. They're accelerating their own collapse. Got foot on the gas. A hundred percent. They're trying to hold on to this position of privilege. And in doing so, they get ever more egregious. And they have to continue to try and defend that egregious behavior Because it's predicated on their entire lifestyle. Their whole house of cards is built on this supremacy, on Jewish supremacy. And so it's like, yeah, kill a journalist. They did it. Even though all the evidence, all the eyewitnesses, even a person with a basic understanding of gun sounds could tell you those were two different guns. You ever heard a sniper rifle? You ever heard an automatic weapon or a semi-automatic weapon? Also, shouts out Janine. I didn't realize they had semi-autos and autos. Let's fucking go, doc. Anybody could tell you those are different guns, right? And so it's like, also, the person from Palestine, the resistance fighter, he shot and then he walked away. Who is the people who are firing on the folks coming to help Shireen? That, That seems like it wouldn't be the guy who just walked away. I don't know. You know, I know a lot of people are scared to say that the Israeli military killed her, but I'm not. The Israeli military killed her, murdered her, assassinated her. And they injured, did you see they injured another reporter? Yes, who was her, her colleague. Who uh, his, bleeding all over the place. And that hasn't been mentioned very much, but he was also hit. Ali al Samudi, who is now luckily in stable condition. And they murdered a 16 year old boy. That story almost got, got almost no coverage because it happened the same day as Shireen. Did you hear how the occupation, after they murdered Shireen, they actually stormed her house? Yeah, they raided her house In and tried Jerusalem, to grab the flags. Her family had put up Palestinian flags and they raided her house to take down the flags. They just murdered her and they thought that the most appropriate thing to do would be to take down the flags. Hey, quick game of capture the flag after you murder a journalist. Imagine the gall of assassinating a beloved journalist in broad daylight and then trying to convince people that it was actually Palestinians who did it. Can you believe the gall of these Zionists? Truly. It's like, it's like they have no grip on reality where like they say something that's totally clearly false and idiotic. And they're just like, yeah, people will believe that. People will think that that is credible. They post all of that bullshit nonsense analysis 
onto a social media account with a blue check. And then a ton of other blue checks come to the rescue and start leaving comments like, oh my God, thank you so much for this. You're a king. I've been waiting for your take forever. And it's like, the you click on these people's profiles and they're actual people who are like influential. You've been waiting for somebody to justify the murder of a journalist? That's what you've been waiting for? I usually wait for like a table at a restaurant. But you're out here waiting for a video to justify the murder of a beloved public figure in Palestinian culture? What else are you waiting on? That's exactly... Like what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are you, <laughs> what have you been waiting on? I think that's what we need to start investigating is like, what is it that you're waiting for? Because it didn't start with a video justifying the death of a Palestinian journalist, and it's not going to end there either. Right? There's a trajectory. Video, video of Palestinians being mass executed. I've been waiting for you to talk about this. King, they killed themselves. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Mahmoud Abbas, he's always like the guy who is like shows up and like the party's over, you know? Yeah, he's yeah. always like the guy who's like misses the whole thing. Yeah, he comes to the rager as it's over and he's just like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everybody's like, who, what? No, that was like four hours ago, bro. <laughs> like the he's beers like, are <laughs> gone. Like <laughs> yeah. literally. He just like found it's out. He just, just found the guys out now. <laughs> like, the girl's already he left, found, bro. He just found out about Bitcoin. Yeah. He's like, hey, have you guys heard about the internet? <laughs> <laughs> because like yesterday, which was like several days into this saga, he vowed to take Israel to the ICC. We're still yeah. waiting on him to uh, to make good on his promise to take Israel to the ICC if they don't end the occupation in a year from now, which is what he said like six months ago. So, you know, whatever comes first. A boss is like, have you guys heard about TiVo? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else we want to mention? Shireen was somebody who people grew up with on their TVs. She was a recognizable face and a strong voice for Palestinians. She said herself that she wanted to be a journalist so that she could be close to the people and she'll forever remain close to the people. She inspired many generations of Palestinians to pursue journalism, to speak truth to power, to show what's happening on the ground. And her fearlessness, her courageousness, her compassion, and her commitment to the cause of liberation, her empathy. And her sense of humor will forever live on in every person who she inspired. That said, it's fuck the occupation forever. They stole someone who we all loved. And they do that every time they kill a Palestinian. Gideon Levy had a good opinion piece. He wrote, is the blood of iconic Palestinian journalists redder than the blood of anonymous Palestinians? The relative horror expressed over the killing of Shreena Barakla is justified and necessary. It is also belated and self-righteous. Now you're appalled? The blood of a famous journalist, no matter how brave and experienced she was, and she was, is no redder than the blood of an anonymous high school student who was traveling home in a taxi full of women in this same Janine a month ago when she was killed by gunfire from Israeli soldiers. That's how Hanan Khadur was killed. And then, too, the military spokesperson tried to cast doubt on the shooter's identity. They said the matter is being examined. A month has passed, and this examination has yielded nothing. And never will. But the doubts were planted, and they sprouted in the Israeli fields of denial and suppression, where no one actually cares about the fate of a 19-year-old Palestinian girl, and the country's dead conscience is silenced again. Is there a single crime committed by the military that the right and the establishment will ever accept responsibility for? Just one? Good article. You guys should read it. And, and we covered the, the the murder of Hanan Khadur just last month. A girl on her way home from school murdered by the occupation, who is, again, illegally in her city, in her community, should not be there. They also summoned her brother. Oh my God, this is insane. The occupation summoned her brother to the Israeli police station. What for? Not a suspect. What What for? How? What? What is this? Why? What for? I don't, I don't understand. They murdered her. We should be summoning them. And the idea of like them investigating their own murders, it's so disrespectful. It's so flagrantly disrespectful 
to murder somebody in broad daylight and then be like, we'll check it out. No, you won't. Yeah. You're not yeah. equipped. Nobody wants your input. You want your room to be dismantled. Your racist supremacist regime, military regime on our land to be dismantled. That is the only appropriate response to this. Only investigation that we're interested in. An investigation into how to best dismantle apartheid. What Ahmed Zahir said. He said asking Israel to investigate the murder of Shirin Abuakla is like asking Will Smith to investigate who slapped Chris Rock. Yeah, that was it. That was it. That was it. It's like asking OJ to investigate the murder of his wife. Imagine if he was like, hey guys, I'll take care of it. I'll look into it. Yeah. I've investigated. Turns out, did nothing wrong. Let me write a book about it. Yep. Cl investigation closed. Well, yeah. thank you, folks. We can move on. Open and shut case. It's like asking Chevron to investigate the burning of the Amazon. Asking BP to investigate their oil spill. And then they come Sounds back weird, and they're right? like, and they're like, hey, guys, turns out we didn't spill any oil. And Sounds you're like, weird, right? like you're, you're looking at a duck who's now black. And you're like, hmm, that duck didn't used to be black why can't he swim and then they're like you're crazy that's what they'll say they'll, 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 you're, you're, you're i know what you think is the truth but you're crazy you shouldn't believe the truth you should believe this fictional nonsense that we just came up with you know in all those scenarios it sounds insane we would never accept that as logical but for some reason when israel murders palestinians we pat them on the back for saying that they will investigate oh yeah that's a huge burden off the shoulders of oh, any press secretary oh they're gonna look at that the, the investigation look at, look, at it. look at them investigating we don't even have to do anything now because they're already investigating let me kick my feet up let me just matter of fact i was i was due for a vacation alia it makes no sense in any other context. Literally no sense. But just the word we're going to investigate is enough to absolve them from any accountability for running a racially supremacist regime and murdering people all the time. Hey, we've got people it's, locked in an open air prison for the last like 20 years. We're going to investigate. We will no, I say, investigate. I say it a lot, Michael, but we are being gaslit. Palestinians are being gaslit. We are being we are being subject to one of the most insane gaslighting experiments in modern history. I mean, when I read the empty plastic bottle line, I just said, I am being gaslit. Hey, can you imagine if what that bottle is? was full? Would have been a yeah. full-on massacre if it was if it, it had been a Coke Zero. Yeah. It would have been the headline, not not the sentence. Right. It would have been an ad for the product. It's important to keep track of the news that doesn't get attention in moments like this, but increased settlement activity. More and more and more settlements are being announced at the exact same time, and they're getting less news. It's all happening at the same time, and it's all part of the grand plan to make Palestine unlivable for Palestinians. It's been the plan the whole time. They've said it all the time. That's still the plan today. And that involves making it an unsafe place to report the news. Because if people like Shireen didn't exist, if there were no journalists in Palestine, then the apartheid state could accomplish its goal of ridding Palestine of Palestinians much quicker. Yeah, we've seen the escalation of violence towards journalists. There was that video at Al-Aqsa a few weeks ago where journalists were gathered in a specific area clearly identified as press, all of them in, you know, just like huddled together. And then the occupation forces attacked them with like smoke bombs and also just beating them with batons and stuff, treating them like they are cattle at like a farm that doesn't care about animal rights. They clearly see journalists as a viable target. They kind of, they take pride in it here. They take, they enjoy the interaction of terrorizing journalists and then they film it themselves and they put it up and they're bragging about it like they are so sadistic it's no surprise to anybody who's been following palestine that journalists are being targeted as we have seen be listed off 45 that they've killed in the last 20 some years it's no surprise to us that this escalation has led us to this point where they sniped 
one of the most beloved public figures in Palestinian journalistic history, Shari Nabuakla. We've been telling you, we've been telling every, we've been trying to tell the whole world that they murder journalists for fun. Like it's one of those carny games at a fair for them. Hey, what part of Jewish tradition is beating funeral processions? I guess I'm unfamiliar with the Torah. Yeah, we got a long list of questions about, about the Torah. Man, they really interpret that thing different, huh? Sorry, I got to try and get some jokes in. You know what I mean? Like the episode is heavy been, as fuck. You've been doing great. Your jokes are fire today. And I, it's like, I don't like I'm I really like I'm laughing because I want to laugh. And I and I'm but I'm even holding myself back from laughing more. It's 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 a delicate balance. So I feel in all my uh, sets that uh, people are just holding back their laughter because they don't want to be too much, you know? <laughs> Every time I perform, that's right. the case. Folks, folks, that has been another episode of the Palestine Pod. Thank you all so much for listening. Check out our full episodes and sources at www.palestinepod.com. Find us on Instagram at the Palestine Pod. Send us an email at palestinepod at gmail.com. And please subscribe to our Patreon to support this project. www.patreon.com slash Palestine Pod. That's been another episode of the Palestine Pod. Thank you all so much for listening. Have a great day. All right, Michael. Good luck with your shows this weekend. All right. Hey, love you, fam. Um, yeah. You're so love special. You your your voice is so important. And uh, thank you. You know, you are a part of the tradition of keeping Shireen alive. So. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Yeah. I mean, we're all just doing what we have to do and what yeah. we can do. I keep I keep getting a thing that says my internet is unstable, but it's like, hey, oh, okay. so am I. Don't fucking play with me.